Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel, I'm Justin, and in this video we're going to be talking about the difference between a poly format and a mono stereo format for your audio recording. Now, both of these styles of formats end up giving you the same output. It's just a workflow thing that you might like, you might not like, and we're gonna try and see which one is for you. Because, like I said, when the product is finally out, no one's going to care if you record it in poly or in mono. It's for you and how you like to work. So I'm recording into the Zoom F6 right now. I'm recording at 32-bit float and 48 kilohertz. But more in depth, the poly and mono stereo formats will be a part of your workflow and make sure that you get the right settings that make workflow easier for you. And that's the point of this. It's not a matter of quality anymore. It's a matter of how easy it is for you to organize your files and how easy it is for you to just make things work. Because at the end of it, it's all going to be exported the same way. So this is about your workflow more so than anything else. So if you look in the manual here of the Zoom F6, it explains what a poly file is. A single poly file will be created that contains audio for multiple tracks. Now what this means is you're going to get one WAV file when you put it into your computer. It's going to be one file and that's it. That one file contains all the tracks that were created or recorded during the time that you were recording for that singular file. So if you're recording one, two, three, whatever files or whatever tracks, that is going to be within that one file. Now, when you go into Premiere Pro, I don't know about any other programs, but Premiere Pro, as far as editing software for video, you throw it into your software and it comes up as the one file still in your side menu there where all your files are. But when you throw it into the sequence, that's when it expands into multiple tracks. And we'll get into how that works in just a little bit, we're going to explain what mono stereo is now. And mono stereo is a little bit more straightforward. A single mono file is created for each mono track and single stereo file is created for each stereo track. Now what this means is there is each individual track has their own WAV file and a corresponding stereo track along with it. So in this case, all of them are separate, so you have to individually bring them into the program and individually put them into the sequence. Now, depending on your workflow, depending on how you like things, this will determine which way you want to go. For me, I've been messing around with the poly and I almost prefer it. I mean, it's I'm on the fence of if I'm going to switch over, but recently I've been using mono stereo. And if I'm working for someone, they're used to mono stereo because it makes it easier for them to work or it's just not as confusing to work with. So when I'm working with other people, I'll keep it in mono stereo. But when I'm doing my own personal thing, I might switch over to poly because it's really nice and really easy to work with. Now, granted, maybe it only saves me like two minutes, but maybe that two minutes over time will snowball into something that makes my life a little bit easier. All right. so. Now that we know what these files mean and what these formats are, let's go into Premiere Pro. And of course, you could do this in a DAW, meaning a digital audio workspace. Uh, but for the most part, I'm going to be using Premiere Pro. So I've already imported some files here. So the mono stereo, everybody's standard mono stereo format. Each of these they got three tracks are one, two, and three. Those three tracks are recorded simultaneously, but they come out as three different WAV files. Very simple, very easy to use. Now, your poly tracks. See, we have one here, one track, that's it. But when you import it, you could see already we have multiple files in here. But one thing specifically, there's two extra files. Now, why is that? Because there are three individual tracks for the three individual tracks here. 
And there's a left, right stereo track, or two tracks for left and right. Now, uh, technically it's two mono tracks for uh, stereo output. But regardless, the first two here, so you unlink these because they're linked when they come in, are those stereo tracks. I delete those. I get those out of the way. You can mute them if you want, but I just delete them, get them out of the way. And your one, two, three are there. One, two, three, track one, two, three, and track one, two, three are here. Now, here's the major thing that I noticed. If you hover over this one, this is the one that's the individual track. It says track one. Go to this one, track two. Go to this one, track three. Go to this one, doesn't have a track. Go to this one, same number, doesn't have a track. And same thing with this. These are all named the same thing because they're under the same file. This could be a problem if you don't keep track of what things are. Like if you have a two labs and a boom going. Usually if you have that system, you have the boom on track one and two labs simultaneously as two and three. But if you just so happen to mix up your tracks and they aren't the same as they usually are, this could be a problem trying to figure out which ones they are. And I don't know if I've found a way to construct it or deconstruct it to the point where I could find out which track it is. If you know down the down in the comments, let me know if you know on the Zoom F6 how to de how to get the metadata on it. But as far as I can tell, it's really uh, all the same file. Granted, it all comes in in one fell swoop and that's it. But there you got to keep track of your files and make sure you got the right ones. So that is the difference between poly files and mono stereo files when recording into a field recorder like the Zoom F6 or the F8 or something similar to that. Uh, they have all types of different ones. There's Tascam, there's Zoom, there's uh, the Mix Pre, I think is another one. And they all have these formats, at least a lot of them do. If you have a field recorder, they usually do have that. If you have a handy recorder, maybe not. So me personally, I think eventually I'm still going to stick with the mono stereo, but for right now I am going to experiment with the poly formats because I have a couple of videos coming up where I'm going to be recording multiple tracks simultaneously and maybe it's a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to try with one video, one of those uh, comparison videos that you guys uh, know, just a little teaser here. The AT2040 is going up against everything, so keep an eye out for those videos and we'll find out if that microphone is a good option compared to the other budget broadcast microphones. But for the most part, I think eventually I'll go back to the mono stereo as my regular format. Uh, poly is cool. Poly is nice. I just feel like it's just not enough to make the switch and it's uh something that could go wrong there's one thing there's one thing major thing that could go wrong i lose track of which track is which uh which is not necessarily a thing that could happen not necessarily a thing that will happen but it could happen so uh just something that i don't want to have a problem with in the future and especially if i'm working client work or working a job as a boom operator or oil recordist I don't want to have that problem when dealing with someone on the back end saying, hey, what's up with my formats? Why is this only one track? Where are the other ones? So I don't want to deal with that. So it's easier to do the mono stereo when you're working with other people, unless you're told otherwise, in which case you just go and do what everyone asks. The customer is always right, that kind of thing. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button down below. It would be greatly appreciated. It gets this video out to more people. That whole YouTube algorithm thing, it really helps out. And uh, if you like my vibe around here and things I'm doing with the Zoom F6 stuff, mic reviews, and all stuff like that, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell uh, because uh, then you know when things come out. Also, comments down in the comment section if I didn't cover anything or if you, have to, if you want me to elaborate further on something that I talked about in this video and uh, streams on the weekend. I think I think I'm back into it. Uh, I've been so busy lately that I haven't had much time and recording videos and doing other stuff. There's just a lot of stuff going on right now. So I really want to get back into streaming and I might even just slip a stream in during the week. So keep an eye out. If you have notifications on, you'll know when 
I go live. And until next time, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Do you have anything useful? A throwing knife. Maybe it's the one I threw into your throat.